Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about using MVR files to get your rig out of your drawing program, mainly Vectorworks, and into Magic Cube. To get started, we need a drawing to pull the MVR file from. So we have a show here that is the Chauve demo show drawn in Vectorworks. We have some PARs, we have some Lecos, MK2 spots, R1 beams, R2 washes, and some Nexus AQ 5x5s. They're drawn, they're in the right position for where we want them in the show. We have clicked through each fixture and made sure that they have channel and address information, universe information, the appropriate information here in the object info panel to make sure that they're patchable. That consists of channel, address, and universe. Magic Q is going to use the channel number as the unit number, or the head number for the fixtures. Whenever possible, you want to be able to select the fixture and choose at minimum a fixture mode. In Vectorworks, if not, actually choose the GDTF fixture file. So this file is complete. We have address and fixture information for every fixture. We've done modes where we can, and we're ready to export the MVR file. So we're going to go up to File, Export. MVR, and I'm going to choose only the lighting devices. Currently, Magic Q will not import geometry or truss information. It will only import lighting devices. So here in the panel, we're choosing just lighting devices. We see our 75 fixtures that we have in our show, and we're going to click OK. This is going to open up a save dialog. We're going to save it into your documents folder, Magic Q Show. And we're just going to give it the name Chauvet Demo Show. This may take some time to export depending on the size and complexity of your rig. Have some patience. It'll get there eventually. Once our export is done, we're done in Vectorworks. We can move over to Magic Q. We have a fresh show or a new show loaded in, into Magic Q. We're going to go to Setup. We're going to go to View Settings. We're going to go to the File Manager. And then we're going to sort by date. And you'll see one of our first files here is the Chauvet demo show at MVR that we just exported. Once I click that down in the command line, you'll see it's patching our instruments. And once it's all patched, you'll see them appear in the viz. Now going back to what we mentioned earlier about the GDTF and the fixture modes within Vectorworks, because none of our fixtures had those GDTF files associated with them, what Vectorworks has done is it's created dummy GDTF files for those fixtures. So you see that we have our PARs, they're listed as GDMX mode. We have our source for Lecos, again, are listed as GDMX mode. And then if we look at our other fixtures, it did the best it could to figure out what these should be. Our Nexus 5x5s ended up being Nexus 5x5s, however, they're in the wrong mode, which caused the patch discrepancy. Our MK2 spots patched perfectly in advanced mode, in the right spot with the right head numbers. The Rogar 2 washes patched with the correct address, however, they're in the smaller mode. And the Rogar 1 beams did the same. Again, they're in the right spot, they have the right head numbers, right addresses, just again in the smaller mode. This will be common as the MVR file system evolves. Eventually, we hope to have it to where it will identify each fixture correctly every time. However, with the missing information of modes and the missing GDTF files for a lot of fixtures, you may run into these problems. These problems are not hard to fix. We can easily correct them by morphing the current fixtures into the correct fixture types and fixture modes. So we'll start with our PARs. We can come up and choose dim slash media, generic dimmer, select the whole column, and morph the head into a dimmer. We'll do the same thing over here for our Lecos because they're just dimmer channels. Again, we'll select the header, select the whole column, and morph those into dimmers as well. For our fixtures that have the wrong mode selected, it's easy enough to select that set of fixtures. We'll go choose head, we'll go to Chauvet, we'll find the Rogue R2 washes. Now you may see two versions of this because the Magic Q file system is going to create a file for that placeholder GDTF file. So if you choose one of these and there's no modes available, 
it's likely that you chose that. You see here it says GDMX mode. It also says it up here in the title bar. That's selecting the same placeholder GDTF file. So I'm going to choose head, Chevet. We'll pick the correct one. These are meant to be in 22 channel mode. Again, we'll select the header and we'll simply morph the head. Now, if we look at our R2 washes, you'll see 22 channel mode. The addresses line up. They're all good. We'll do the same thing for our rogue R1 beams. We'll choose head. We'll go to Chauvet. We'll go up to our rogue R1 beams. Again, there's two of them because it created a fixture file for that placeholder GDTF file. We'll pick our fixtures. We'll put these in 19 channel mode. Again, we'll select the header and morph the fixture. Now, the Nexus AQ5x5s did come in with the correct head numbers. However, they chose a larger mode than the other fixtures. We wanted these in 75 channel mode according to Vectorworks. That's what we put the DMX footprint as. Magic Q interpreted and found the correct fixture. However, they put it in 100 channel mode. Again, this is easily fixed by going to choose head, Chevet. We will search for the Nexus AQ 5x5 and we will pick the 75 channel mode. Again, we'll select the header and we'll morph the fixtures into the correct mode. Now with the Nexus 5x5s, you'll see that we have some fixtures unpatched. You can manually repatch these, or in this case, it's easy enough to just select them all and set the first start address and let it patch them straight through. Now that we've straightened out our patch, we're ready to start programming. Everything's in the right spot. All the fixtures work as you would expect. and we can start programming our show. Hope you found this useful. Check back for updates on GDTF and MVR files as that technology and those file formats mature. We will be implementing more of the planned capability for MVR and GDTF as those files and that system matures and it gets more support from the industry.